Welcome to the first episode of a brand new series called The Outside Ear, where I pick albums I enjoy and get somebody who isn't familiar to share their thoughts and opinions on the music. My name is Bryson. And I'm Angeline. Now, despite me being younger, this type of music I love usually comes from the 70s, like a good old hard rock and progressive rock. And you? Well, I come from a different time uh, where uh, we listened to mostly Panamanian music in my home. And it wasn't really until the 80s that I got into listening to what was popular back then, like Prince and Madonna. So that's kind of what I grew up with. I never really was into rock, but if I was to pick a rock um, group that I listened to, you're going to laugh, like Poison, Motley Crue, that type (laughs) of type of music <laughs> and the, the big hair bands and then into the 90s uh i was more into like hip-hop and um maybe rap and uh so i, I listened to a large variety of music anywhere from um uh, latino music to uh, just what's uh just regular pop music i guess i was never really into the old 70s or 60s type music yeah but i'm 19 and she just turned 49 yep so but um <laughs> For the first episode, I decided to pick Deep Purple's Machine Head. Um, I felt like it was a pretty accessible album, and an album I thought you would enjoy. So, uh, that being said, uh, let's get into it. Machine Head released back in 1972 on March 25th. Um, It was recorded in Montreux, Switzerland, which um, I think the recording where an album was recorded isn't necessarily all that important, but obviously in this case it was, but it was recorded in Montreux, Switzerland, and was later finished in the Rolling Stones mobile studio. Um, I think anybody who's listened to this album probably knows why I'm mentioning this, but uh, I'll get to that later on. Uh, The lineup of the band consisted of Ian Gillen on vocals, Richie Blackmore on guitar, Ian Pace on drums, Roger Glover on bass, and finally John Lord on keyboards. And Machine Head is usually regarded as the very best album by Deep Purple. Um, It's not my personal favorite. Um, That would be Burn from 74. But this is a really strong album, and I definitely understand why people consider this to be the best Purple album. So the starting song on Machine Head is Highway Star. So what was your opinion on Highway Star? Well, after listening to it, I actually thought that the title of the song really did match the song perfectly. Um, just the the tune of the song, I could see myself in a in a car just driving on a scenic highway with the wind blowing through my hair, yeah. and that was kind of cool. And then um, the beginning of the the song with the keyboard, I, I liked that. And uh, and then what I really liked about the song was the way they used the instruments in the song, because you could almost hear like uh, sounds that you would hear racing down the freeway or uh, the highway like beeps of a car or like a semi accelerating as you're driving fast so that was kind of cool how they use the instruments that way so like you you heard you kind of interpreted that from the instruments alone yeah yeah just like the way they played the the instruments you can kind of hear sounds of a car to me and yeah kind of cool yeah so that, that's something even i've listened to the song multiple times but uh that's something i really never Notice, so I think it was kind of cool that you kind of came to that conclusion. Yeah, I found it pretty unique. Um, I, I I love the song. To me, it's a great opener. It gets you really pumped up to what is obviously a great album. But uh, I just love the very just nonstop, just going forward, um, you know, progressive feeling of the song. And I think Ian Gillen shows off some of his of his best vocals on this album with the song um i think it has some really solid soloing parts especially with uh, richie blackmore and obviously john lord and I, I think i mean this is you know regarded as a pretty classic purple song this is a, a favorite among many purple fans but uh i think i think highway stars a song i think most people could get into just for how energetic it is. Yeah, it was very energetic. I like that. And then the way um, the the way that he used his voice in singing it too. It was very uh, upbeat. Yeah. Yeah, I like it. No, I actually very much agree with you on the part with um, just like 
just driving down a highway or something. Yes. I mean, it's called Highway Star, but like just driving like through the middle of a desert or something on just, yeah. on a lonely road and just blasting the song. You can totally see yourself listening to this as you're as you're driving by. I imagine myself in a convertible <laughs> on a sunny day with the wind blowing through my hair and blasting yeah. this. So that's kind of cool. Yeah. So uh, yeah. What's your so you would say thumbs up for Highway Star? I would definitely say thumbs up for Highway Star for for an opener song and that was my first time really listening to this album. I I did like that for a first song. Yeah, good. Song number two is Maybe I'm a Leo. So what are your thoughts on this one? On that one, I just it was kind of like a cool, chill type of mood. I, I just imagined somebody just like pondering on his thoughts. And then I like that there was like a melody that that was played throughout. It's like da, 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 da. please, I'm I know I'm out of tune here, but <laughs> <laughs> I kind of like how it played that throughout the song, and uh, and then it, I do remember like little mini, mini solos that each uh, mm-hmm. um, throughout the the song, or maybe like it was like in the middle of it. That was pretty cool, but it was just kind of a more laid just, back. Yeah, just like a laid back chill song. So that was that was kind of cool. Um, for me, because when it comes to music. I usually put lyrics second, and I usually always remember like the instrumentation of you know songs I love. But uh, when I was listening to this album again for this video, um, I was reading through the lyrics, and I just uh, really never knew what these songs were about. But um, yeah, it's just really unique sounding song. I would say um, mm-hmm. probably the most laid back song in the album. Yeah, say. it was pretty, pretty laid back. But um, I think it just has a really nice, just just memorable riff um, played by both uh, John Lord and occasionally by Richie Blackmore. But um, maybe I'm a Leo. Uh, it's a song that's just good. I really have nothing, a whole lot to say about it. It's just a really good, memorable song, I would say. Yeah, I liked it too. It wasn't bad. Um, I'm a Leo. So <laughs> that, that counts for something. Yeah. But um, yeah, maybe I'm a Leo. Okay. Good song. Yep. So song number three, Pictures of a Home. Now, I remember you telling me that before we actually listened to it, you were going to think it would be like a, a bit of a sadder song. Yeah, the, the I guess the title of the song threw me off, like Pictures of Home. I, I instantly thought of like, uh, just like a sad song, but then it ended up being a little more um, kind of a chaotic sound. I guess it wasn't as mellow as I thought it was going to be. But you can definitely hear the uncertainty in in the sounds. So it was a little more like a, like a little more anxiety, I guess you would say, into it. Yeah. Like the, the feeling. It's that very you got. like a panic. Yeah, and so I and I thought it was going to be based off his feelings from home. But after getting familiar with the lyrics, I didn't realize it was him actually being in a different place, wanting to go home. So that was a that was kind of a an eye opener there so that was kind of cool um just what i thought the song was going to be and it ended up being like the opposite where actually he wanted to go home so that was kind of cool and then um the bass guitar yeah there was a a little section of the bass guitar that was pretty cool i like Mm -hmm. that a lot yeah you you gotta love roger glover great bass player Um, i've always loved the opening with the drums just how that leads in into the main riff where it gets you kind of just um i want to say like like expecting you to um, get what the song's about, but it kind of gets you pumped up or, like, ready. And then when the main riff comes in, like, oh, wow, that, that's different. But um, Pictures of Home. Yeah, it's a song that just, once again, stick to your head. I don't want to sound like a broken record here because every song on here is just really good, but um, Pictures of Home is pretty unique, I would say, especially for this album where a lot of it is either just kind of bluesy and stuff, but this song kind of has a different, just more urgent, I would say that's the best word, urgent. Yeah, you can feel the mood. You can definitely feel the mood You in feel there. the mood, and yeah. Ian Gillen, I think, perfectly reflects that with his vocals. He sounds very panicked. He sounds like he just really does not enjoy the situation he's in right now. And uh, I think that's just a testament to just how great of a singer he is. Yep. Yeah, that there's no place like home. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> no place like home. But uh, Pictures of the Home, great song. With Never Before, I, I found this to be kind of funny because for me, this is like 
personally my favorite song off the album. <laughs> but I don't know. For me, I just felt like compared to the other three I had just previously listened to, it had like a slower start. So then I was like waiting for it to go somewhere. And then it started getting a little faster. I'm like, okay, now, now it's going to pick up. But then it was like it kept on going back and forth for me. Like it would like pick up and then it would get slower and then pick up and then get slower again. And I was kind of like, where's this going? And I don't know. For me, like, I mean, it wasn't a bad song, but it was kind of like it didn't really, it wasn't exciting for me. <laughs> yeah. Um, I think the reason why I like this song the most is I think I just like the, probably mostly because of um, Ian Gillen's the soulful performance on here. I think this song shows his his more soulful side of his range and a bit of more of his melodic kind of singing than his more raspy singing, which we'll be singing in pretty soon. Okay. But, um, yeah, I guess I really didn't pay attention to the vocals really. I was like more listening to like the instruments being played, like where's this going? Type yeah. Of thing. I mean, I, I love the instrumentation as well. I think the beginning, um, very different for purple, kind of more, I would say almost like reggae inspired, um, very just kind of laid back, and then once the main riff kicks in, I I, I enjoy it a lot. It is a, I don't know, it's just a song I usually go back to the most off of this album. I, I don't exactly know why. It's just, I enjoy it. Yeah, and like I said, it wasn't a bad song. It's just I was just waiting for something exciting to happen. And for me, it just didn't happen. <laughs> like you were expecting more to happen? <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I was yeah. just... I guess compare. I was comparing it to the first three I listened to, and I was like, okay, well, you know, it's not a bad song, but I'm not like yeah, over could, the moon over it. I could understand that, you yeah. know. I mean, you have, you know, Highway Star and pictures of a home, and you know, even maybe I'm a Leo. I could see how a new somebody like who's never listened to listen, eh, never listened to this before, um, would see this as being maybe a bit boring in, in comparison. But yeah. I don't know. To me, it's just the song that sticks out to me the most uh, for whatever reason i've always liked it the most and uh, never before so up next is the song everybody knows smoke on the water yes and this is actually a song i've heard before but i didn't know you know who sang it until it was played i was like oh yeah i remember the song but it's just i never listened to deep purple so i had no idea they sang it it's just one i do remember and so I would have to say I really enjoyed the song. I love the beginning. I'm sure as most people do. Um, yeah. That was. I mean, it's one of the most iconic guitar yeah. parts of all time. Like I loved uh, how it was kind of like a funky tune. I loved uh, just like the the guitar playing because I mean that just basically makes the song. And then I really really enjoyed out of all the songs so far that we listened to this one here, the the vocals because mm -hmm. he has that like the raspiness in it and you could just feel the the intense emotions so that was kind of i like that like when he was intensifying the lyrics with that yeah raspy voice and of course the song is based off the real life event where deep purple um were playing live with uh, frank zappa um in montreux switzerland somebody in the audience had a flare gun and shot it into the air and uh that caused the entire place to burn down where then deep purple had to finish uh, recording the album in the Rolling Stones mobile studio, so that's kind of the importance of uh, the recording process of the album. Um, but uh, it's just a very famous song um, for me. It's not like a huge favorite because it's a song you just hear all the time. And for somebody like me who loves Deep Purple, I, I really for any band, honestly, I, I go for more of the deep cuts, just the songs you don't hear nearly as much. Um, but that being said, I, I can't like I can't trash on smug in the water even though maybe it is played a lot I, I can't deny that it's a very great song with a very great riff that any a aspiring guitar players pretty much have to learn it's like with um paranoid with black sabbath this is a guitar riff that everybody pretty much knows how to play because it is just so iconic but uh, Smog on the Water, you said it's like one of your favorites, if not your favorite. Yeah, like so far, I, I, for, I was compared to like all the songs you've listened to so far. I was like, say that was my favorite. So far. It's understandable. Yeah. You know, you know, coming from somebody who isn't familiar with the band. Do you like the song because you're more familiar with it? Well, that's what I was. I was trying to keep that away from it. I mean, I had heard it before, but like I said, I didn't know Deep Purple sang it. I know. <laughs> <laughs> but when I heard it and then just recalling hearing that um, and it was kind of a popular song I don't know I just I think I just I really enjoyed the like I said the the guitar playing and um, it's 
it's hard not to like the song. Yeah. Yeah. It's like, I mean, that, that's true. You, no matter how much you may be sick of it, you can't deny it. it's a great song. Yeah. So. For sure. Next up is Lazy, which is, I would say, probably one of the more distinct songs from the album, just because it is just really bluesy. Um, has much a much a very different sound, I would say, from most of the other songs. But yeah, I thought for being titled "Lazy," it definitely had a lot in it. <laughs> uh, I just like even though it seemed like it took a long time for the lyrics to start up, but there was a lot going on as far as, far as like the musicianship in it. Um, and I and I liked the when they brought in the harmonica. That was really cool. That was like an added uh, instrument that I, the other songs didn't have, which I thought was pretty cool. And then, um, and then there was a way that they were playing some of the beats. Like they they held it out, like they were playing it kind of fast, and then they would hold the beat a little bit. So you that, mean like the rhythms, or yeah, it was like the way they were playing it. And so it gave me this feeling of somebody being lazy, like their mind trying to tell them, like, come on, come on, it's time to get up. And then you're like, no, I'll push snooze <laughs> yeah. for five more minutes. So I can kind of like feel the lazy that it was trying to portray in the song. Mm-hmm. So that was kind of cool, but. Um, I thought it was a pretty catchy, uh, upbeat song for being a lazy song. I think the beginning portion, where it's just purely instrumental, to me it's just a great just showcase of the guys in Deep Purple, just how great of a just of players they are. Um, the great soloing by both John Lord and Richie Blackmore, just uh, just all great all around. And um, I think I think uh, Gillen's vocals in this song also kind of perfectly like represent the lazy feeling yeah i mean he does definitely do a few shrieks here and there but um, when he first comes in he does sound like he's tired or something and i'm not like not in a way that he's like sick of singing but just just to fit in with the music um Mm -hmm. uh, lazy is just a really i think it's a very unique song It's, it's like the longest off the album but it has a very distinct blues feeling. Like you said, it has the harmonica. Yeah, that was really cool. Which, to me, it just adds way more to the blues feeling that the song already had. Um, I mean, Deep Purple has a ton of different bluesy, you know, inspired tracks, but uh, this is probably one of, the, not the most iconic, just because it is just so just uh, blues-inspired, and, uh, you know, you can't, you can't hate on that. And then the last song off the album, Space Truckin'. Now, I would have to say this was another one of my favorites, just like I liked uh, Smoke on the Water. This one, I liked the intro to it because I had that little catchy, or something like that. Yeah. yeah, that was really cool. And with the song, it was really upbeat. You could see yourself traveling somewhere, like listening to the song. You just felt like you were going somewhere listening to it. And then in this song, too, like just like um, Smoke on the Water, I liked the vocals on it because it was he had that... Uh, the intensifying raspy vocals in it, and that was cool. And then there was one part where there was a drum solo that I, I really enjoyed that too. Yeah, the um, like it may not be the most complex song off the album, but it's definitely the one that probably maybe tied with Highway Star that just gets you the most energetic, maybe like the most awake. I would say, um, yeah, I think this is a perfect way to end off the album. Just really. It sticks in mind the the like the, the the rhythms and the, the melodies are they're all just memorable. They stick in your mind, and because of that, I think it's just a great ending. Um, this is definitely one of the best. I would say even like the best Gillen performance off the entire album. He really shows off his higher pitch range, and um, when he starts screaming near the end, I, I I love that part each and every time I listen to the song. Um, I mean the lyrics. They can be a bit cheesy, but you know who cares? It's a great song, either way. Uh, Space Truckin' might be one of the best endings, or like one of the best finales to any Deep Purple album I can think of. Um, I mean, there's some really other good ones, but uh, Space Truckin' is definitely up there. And to me, it's kind of a great way of ending off the album because the first and the last song of the album yes. both kind of involve like driving. Yeah, I was going to actually say something about that, how the way they started the album and ended it was, like, perfect. Yeah, yeah. like it bookends with, yeah. like, a, kind of a similar theme, except with space trucking, it's talking about being in space and traveling different planets, but, you know, I think that's a great way to end off the album.
Overall, how much did you like Machine Head? Okay, so overall, I have to say, uh, I never would have picked this album up to listen to. So I'm really glad you exposed me to it. Uh, you know, just exposing my, expanding my my music uh, taste here. I think overall, I had a really good beat. Um, I could see myself maybe, you know, downloading this for a for a trip to listen to. Uh, I think overall, I loved how. You could really hear throughout the whole album how the musicians had a chance to showcase their talent in their instrument playing. So that was kind of cool. And um, and the vocals, too, throughout the, the album, how, you know, some of them he was softer and then others he was raspier. So they just really displayed themselves well as a, a band, I think, on this album. Yeah, I think actually I think you pretty much described it perfectly. Just each band member has a place to shine off the album. Um, you can hear every member. There's not one that's left behind. Has some some of the best performances from Gillen in the band. And Machine Head, like I mentioned earlier, it's not my personal favorite. It's very high up there, being one of my favorites. But um, my favorite is Burn from two years later. But Machine Head, I think it's it's given you know such a high status for a good reason. It has a bunch of classics. Obviously, Smoke on the Water is the biggest hit. So, what what would you say is your favorite song of the album? Ooh, it would be a tie between um, the fifth song, "Smoke on the Water," and then the last song, "Space Truckin." It would be a t- pretty much a tie between those two. All right, uh, for me, "Never Before" is my favorite. Okay. And what would you say is your least favorite? <laughs> the one that was your favorite, <laughs> "Never Before." Now, like I said, it wasn't a bad song, but it wasn't. Wasn't my favorite. Yeah, it's understandable. Um, <laughs> honestly, picking a least favorite from this album is kind of hard for me because yeah. I just love each and every song. Um, but if like I had to pick one as my least favorite, it might be maybe Smoke on the Water, honestly. Really? Yeah. Okay. okay. Because I think every other song is just... You don't hear them nearly as much, and so okay. yeah. they, they're they a bit more fresh to hear. Yeah. You know, um, obviously taking nothing away from Smoke on the Water, it is a fantastic track with, you know, interesting history to it. But, you know, if if you, you know, gave me a million dollars to say what my least favorite song off Machine Head was, I would probably say, you know, it would be Smoke on the Water. But that's not saying a whole lot, honestly. So, um yeah, Machine Head, just an overall great album that I'm glad you enjoyed. Yeah, and if you haven't had a chance to listen to it, pick it up and listen to it. <laughs> yeah. So thank you for listening, and uh, we hope to do many more of these in the future. Um, this is just the first episode, so if you want to see more, then just, you know. Uh, or maybe even suggest an album to listen to. Or, yeah, yeah. do that. It could be interesting. But I would say I would just say stick around if you want to see more videos like this. And thank you for watching. Thank you. Farewell.